know you should be doing something different, right? Hey, I'm talking to you. Do you believe that you have the gift for greatness or have a special talent, but don't have the courage to take that next step? Always wondering how others made it look so easy? Well, welcome to Jump, the show that will bring you special guests just like you and me. How did they get the courage to jump into greatness? Doing what they love and living the good life. So, get ready to jump with your host, Charles Matthews Jr. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Jump Podcast. Now, if this is your first time here, welcome. Now, Jump is all about getting to that next level. What are you doing? How are you jumping? Now, we're not talking about jumping up and down. We're talking about jumping into greatness. Success is waiting for you. But sometimes we just don't have our minds right. You know, we're scared. We overthink. We think what we're going to do is like, how do we get started? Well, I have a gentleman here that I think will help us a lot. And I'm so happy he can be here. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my special guest for today. How you doing, sir? Hello. Liam, are you there? Oh, we lost the Liam. You there? Hello. Oh, think there we go. How you doing, sir? Liam, you're muted. Hello. You're on mute, sir. Unmute yourself. You there, sir? Hello? There you are. Liam, how you doing? <laughs> Unmute yourself. You're still muted on your end. Just unmute yourself. If you can hear me, just nod and unmute yourself. There you go. Right. There you go. <laughs> Very sorry about that technical glitch. Then what don't know what happened there? No worries. No worries. No worries. We're we're glad to have you on the show. So let's just get right Great into it. Great to be it. here. Thank you very much. Yes. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Right. Okay. Well, I'm a speaker, a teacher, a writer, a researcher. My main area of interest and expertise, if you like, or what I I really spend my time investigating is why we really get the results we do in our life. You know, why, why are we happy? Why are we not happy? Why do we get things we want? And why do we get the things that we don't want? And it it really came from a long, um, many years of, of study and practical experience. But something happened to me in my mid-40s, which was the catalyst for all of this, which was that I 
went from being a multi-millionaire to literally becoming homeless, lost everything. Oh, just yeah, like I had that. To move pretty much, pretty much overnight. And I had to move back in and sleep on the sofa um, in my elderly mother's small apartment in the living room of her small apartment. So that mm. really got me thinking because I'd studied before that I'd been really successful. And not only right. had I been successful in my own businesses and built up a you know large net worth and all of those um, and I'd be you know I was the guy who went to all the seminars I went to seminars all over the world on self-improvement self-help personal development I went to lots of different courses I bought programs and courses I listen I read lots of books I studied lots of things. I'd listen to tapes on how to change your thoughts and your beliefs and how to be motivated and how to do all these different things. And I also sp studied spirituality, things like the law of attraction and all those sorts of things, religion, philosophy, psychology. I was really committed to trying to figure out how could I be the best version of me. So when I lost everything, it was like a huge moment because I thought, why has this happened to me? How could this have happened to me? I'm supposedly an expert on success. I've, I know about mm -hmm. goal setting. I know about, you know, uh, grabbing opportunities and doing all of the right things and changing your beliefs and being a positive thinker and all those things. This doesn't seem to be, be of any help to me now because here I am homeless. So it was really after that and after I pulled myself out of that situation and things got a lot better, and in fact, they not only got a lot better, but they really got a lot better. And my life was quite different after this experience. And the real difference was that I started to make, when I started to make money again and I started to set up my own businesses again, and I was starting to do make all the money I needed to do what I really wanted to do, good money again. But I was really enjoying my life because whereas before, it was almost like I'd been chasing after success. I'd really been struggling. I'd, I was always setting higher goals and working harder and trying to right. do more and more and motivate myself more and more. The downside of all of that was I made lots of mistakes and I had lots of problems and stress in my life. You know, and mm, I'm sure okay. every entrepreneur or everyone in, in, in life, we've all be led to be, we've been led to believe that if you want to be successful, then stress, problems, overcoming adversity, meeting challenges, struggle, that's just the price you pay for being successful. That's part of life. That's what you have to deal with. And you have to learn how to deal with that. But what I noticed in my new life, as it were, is that instead of me chasing success, instead of me pushing for success, it was very much like success in a weird sort of way was coming to me in the form of I get new and different ideas and I'd go, Oh, that's a good idea. I'll do something in business. That's a, a good thing to do. And it would work. And different sorts of people would show up in my life. Unexpected things would happen. And it would bring along opportunities. And things were working in a much, much better way that instead of me chasing after it, it was like it was coming to me. And I thought, this is really interesting. But the most interesting part of, of all, I didn't really have any stress or problems. You know, I wasn't waking up. I was waking up in the morning excited about the day, not dreading opening my email inbox thinking, oh no, what what's happened overnight? <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to bed at I was going to bed at night going, that's been a great day. I'm really excited about what tomorrow might bring, rather than thinking, oh I'm not going to sleep tonight because I've got all these problems. So, all right, so my let's, life was working so differently. I wanted to figure out what the difference was. And that's really what right. I'm I'm on about now. So let me let me backtrack then because you said yeah. you, you had it all and you lost it, all right? Mm -hmm. So let's f show everybody how you how you gained it all because that, I find that very interesting that one minute you're on the highs of highs and then you're back down again and you're up again. Like, how do we go from there? So where were you born and raised? Well, I'm originally from New Zealand, actually, and I spent most of my life, life there. And uh, I'm not in New Zealand at the moment, but uh, yeah, great, great country. Great so place. growing up, Growing up, what did you want to become? Like, what was the dream for you? Well, the interesting thing was when I was a child, I was brought up in a very religious family. We, I was, I'm the eldest of eight children. And I was always taught 
you know, from an early age, I always want, I still had this drive to be successful and to try and figure out how can I be, be really happy and have lots of things. So my parents and all the people in the church told me the secret to success, the secret to being happy. And that was, you think about what you want, you ask mm -hmm. God, you pray to okay. God and God will give you what you want. So mm -hmm. I actually did that. I remember going to church every day. I must have been about nine or 10 years old. And I went to, ch I thought, I'm going to test God on this one to see if this works. Mm -hmm. And every morning in the middle of winter, I went to church. I think it was 6.30 in the morning. And um, to pray to God for, for one thing. And I thought, if I ask God, every, if I get up at 6.30 in the morning, go to church and pray for this one thing every day for a month, surely he's yeah. going to give it to me. Because that's what I've been told anyway. And I can't remember what it was. It was something trivial like... Um, uh, win a competition at school or something like that but of, of course I didn't really get it and that got me to question I thought mm -hmm. you know does this what what am I missing what am I doing wrong but not only what am I doing wrong what is everyone I know doing wrong because everyone who was telling me that the secret to getting being happy and getting what you want is to pray they weren't really much happier than me you know they weren't much more successful so I thought well either this is a complete load of rubbish which I've said, since discovered it's not or People are doing it wrong, which I've since mm -hmm. discovered is true. Um, and it's all to do with our brain, actually, which, of course, is, is the topic of what I talk about these days. But um, so as growing up as a child, my, I had lots of different passions that I was very excited about. I was very into music, actually. I trained as a musician at university. And, um, and even that experience, I thought somebody told me, if you want to be happy and successful, you need to get an education. You need to have some right. letters after your name. So mm -hmm. I got plenty of letters after my name. I became quite an expert in an area of music that I was that I was studying. But again, even though I really enjoyed it and I became really quite, you know, knowledgeable about everybody else, all my professors, teachers and, every, and other students. And I thought, well, is anybody here? Is this the secret to success? Nobody seems much happier than anyone else. Everyone still seems to have <laughs> the same problems and stress. This isn't the answer either. So that led me on a journey then into my own businesses, the first of many businesses. And alongside that, as I said, I studied and thought, how can I get the most out of my businesses and my life? In other words, make the most money, right. be able to do, do the most things and be the happiest, equating lots of money with being happy, which sort of go together sometimes. But again, you have to get, get things wired right for that to work. Um, and that's really the path that I've been on from really from childhood. So what was the first, the first job? What was the first business that got you going? Well, fun, <laughs> funnily enough, it was the it was wine, you know, the, the drink. <laughs> and okay. uh, when I was, when I was at university, my, my teacher, you know, he was a bit into wine, women and song, you know, the old, <laughs> old expression. Mm -hmm. I became very interested in wine. And then the opportunity came along to, to uh, set up my own or to buy a little wine shop. So I was, I was a wine retailer, an importer, and also a teacher, a writer, a speaker. Anything I could do with wine, I absolutely was passionate about to the hilt. So um, that's what I did. And the business I founded, um, which is now nearly 30 years ago, is still, go still going strong back in okay. Auckland, New Zealand. But that was so my initial passion after music. So, you know, business is going good. Everything is going well. When was the crash? When did you, when, what year, what, when was the crash and why did the crash happen? It was back in 2008, pretty much, although it uh, took a few more years to unfold. And I guess without getting into to the, the specifics of it, what I, I realized was it's probably the same with, with most people when you have this dramatic downfall, if you like, it's the culmination of lots of things lots of bad decisions that have mm -hmm. come, have have taken place over a long period of time it's not just one th one decision or one thing and i'm sure if anyone's been through that they'll recognize yes there were lots of little steps along the way lots of times when i didn't listen to myself and say right. when right. i said that's not a good idea mm -hmm. or that is a good idea but i was too afraid to act on it okay so I was, okay i was like most people or many people in, in the entrepreneurial space and if you have entrepreneurs listening or anyone when they think about it, what's driving you? Is it fear? Are you worried mm -hmm. that you won't have enough 
or that right. you need more yeah. because if you're driven by fear which I, and that's what was created by downfall because mm. i was always struggling I, I thought no i subconsciously of course no i haven't got enough i need more what's the next goal what what do i need to do now what course do i need to do what book do i need to read what do i need to learn what do i need to, you know where's the op new opportunity right and when you operate from an underlying state of fear which is what all of that stuff is you are bound to have a fall because fear is using your brain the wrong way as i've subsequently discovered it's not how we're biologically designed and we are going to run into problems we're going to make the wrong decisions bad things are going to happen if we have a, have a fear or a, you know an anxiety stress if that if that's how we operate from unfortunately yeah i like <clears throat> i like how you said that the fear of what's next what's happening how to get more money and we don't realize that we're in a good space right here you know we're making well, look, good we money <laughs> yeah we live in the best time in history why is anybody unhappy go back 100 <laughs> years go back yeah. any time in history and they would say and you say what we're doing now they'd say you must be the happiest people in the who've ever lived you've got what you can talk to somebody from the other side of the world instantly you can right. have access to any information you've got all these comforts and and things and we're not talking about just you and me we're talking about anybody who's got all of this stuff that even 100 years ago they would have thought was the absolute height of luxury even the the most wealthy people in the world wouldn't have had what we have now so that is mm. why aren't we happy we should be right and uh every day, every day taking a breath you're alive you should be happy yeah well it's it's more than that actually it's about how we're using our brains and we've all been taught well we haven't been taught that's the problem but mm -hmm. we've been we've been led to believe or led to use this machinery which is our brain the wrong way and that's the, the purely the, the sole reason why we end up with all the problems and stress in our life from a biological perspective all right now it's time to get to get, know you a little bit more let's have some fun it's now time for rapid fire my friend i need you to give me a letter a b c or d and i'm going to just throw these questions at you you got see. two minutes you got two minutes on the clock you can explain your answers but remember you got two minutes to get through all of the answers so give okay. me a b c or d c c all right two minutes is on the clock and i'll ask you the first question here it is starting now uh, what is success for you? Being happy in this moment. Sun Sunset or sunrise? Sunrise. Uh, what is your favorite color? Blue. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. What is your favorite food? Tofu. <laughs> what is your favorite dessert? Don't eat dessert. You don't eat dessert? <laughs> no. All right. What is the first thing you think about when you wake up in the morning? How lucky I am to be alive. What is, what is the best fashion advice you've ever gotten? Clean up your act, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Favorite TV show? Don't watch TV. Oh, wow. Hogan's, Hogan's Heroes. There you go. How do you start your morning? In gratitude, with a smile. And what is what keeps you going? The joy of life. There you go. You made it with 40 seconds left, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go nowhere. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to be right back. CMJ Entertainment is a one-stop shop. CMJ Entertainment helps people to do any type of events, and it's a marketing tool as well. So we'll cover everything from start to finish. If it's a wedding, we'll make sure your wedding is over the top. And if it's an event, we make sure that everybody gets information at the end of the day. Give us a call at 416-414-8964 or online at cmjent.com. We are back live, and then there's something that you were saying during the rapid fire. You don't watch TV, uh, no TV at yep. all. Why is that? Uh, because I've learned that the way your brain works mm -hmm. is your brain is a machine, and it operates in a very specific way. 
and it needs the right fuel, just like your car needs the right fuel, your brain needs the right fuel for it to operate biologically correctly to do its purpose, which is to make you the best that you can be so that you have the greatest chance for survival. This is a biological thing. It's not just an airy-fairy idea. Your brain is this machine. But the fuel that it runs on is, is uh, well, the fuel it doesn't run on, the fuel that messes up the whole machine is fear. So anything that makes you feel afraid, anxious, worried, stressed, automatically puts your brain into the wrong biological state, which prevents you being the best that you can be and living your best life. So I've just found anything, I just switch off anything negative. Mm. I don't put that fuel in. Negativity, which you see, and you know, I don't know, I haven't watched TV in probably 20 years, 15 years, um, but I imagine most of it makes people feel fairly stressed. But what they don't realize, it's like drinking hydrochloric acid. If someone came along to you and said, here's some hydrochloric acid, drink it, you'd say no, because I know it's going to damage me, it's going to poison me. Right. And people might say, oh, you know, but but don't worry, everyone else is thinking about drinking it. And, and you know, if you really have a lot of faith and belief and you, you change your mind and, and have positive thoughts, it won't harm you. But you understand how, how your body works. You understand that it is going to damage you. It doesn't matter how justified it might be, why you should drink it. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with negativity, with fear. It activates something in your brain called the sympathetic nervous system when you feel bad. And that blocks off the part of your brain that is designed to make you the best that you can be. So that's why I really am mindful about what I allow into my feelings, into my thoughts. It's, this is nothing, this isn't about positive thinking. This mm -hmm. is biology. So that's why I don't watch uh, TV. <laughs> All <laughs> right. You... Hogan's Heroes. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Now, you yeah. also said when you get up in the morning, affirmations. What does affirmations do? I don't do affirmations. No, I, I think. It, you don't need affirmations. Okay. Affirma I used to do affirmations for years. Right. And they never worked. And I wondered why they didn't work. And again, mm -hmm. you have to be really careful about what you're doing when you're setting goals and when you're reciting affirmations. Is it based on fear? Are you saying subconsciously to yourself, I really need this or I really want this for me to be happy? Okay. Because you see, there are four parts to your brain. And one is the thinking part. And that's what most people are trying to use to figure out their life. So they try and say, I'm, I'm not very happy. Um, and what do I need to be happy? I'll write it down and I'll, I'll focus on it. And I'll put all this struggle and grit and determination. Firstly, it's all based on fear. Mm -hmm. And secondly, you're using your thinking brain to try and do that. But the part of your brain that creates your life is what I call the creative brain. Right. And this, these are all biological parts of your brain. This isn't just a, a theoretical idea. Your creative brain is not your thinking brain and it's not your fear based brain. And in fact, it's shut off when you feel fear because fear puts you in another part of your brain called your survival brain. Right. And that's okay. when you try and do affirmations and struggle and try and figure everything out, which is what I did for years. Rather than realizing there's a part of your brain that knows more than you do about who you are. And mm -hmm. what you really need and what will make you happy, it's the part that's biologically designed to ensure that you have the greatest chance for survival by being the best that you can be. You need to allow that part of your brain to do its job. Firstly, by knowing how to activate it. And I gave you a clue how to activate it. Get rid of anything that makes you feel bad. Right. Because if you feel bad, it deactivates it. And when you do that, you let it do its job. And you do what it says in the Bible. Give no thought for tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Do not worry about what you shall eat, drink, or wear. You'll be looked after. Look at the lilies of the field. Look how much better you are and how much greater you are. Of course you'll be looked after. So even it says it in the Bible, how to use your brain, which is, it doesn't say do affirmations and set goals, funnily enough, does it? <laughs> you know. so, I know this is the opposite to what most people have heard and been taught, but... yeah. I think you need to be, the other thing about goals, I mean, I'm not saying goals aren't valid, but you've got to have the right goals and you've got to know what the right goals are. And the right goals come from a different place entirely inside you from fear, from going, I really want this. I need to have this. I need to have this business or this relationship work. Or I need to have this amount of money. They're the wrong sort of goals because they're coming from the wrong part of your brain. But there's another type of goal, which is a knowing goal. That's when you meet someone, you go, 
I'm going to marry that person. I don't know why or how. I just feel it. Or I'm going to do this with my life. I feel really passionate about it. I, I don't know how it's going to work, but it's just going to work. And those are the goals that actually are in harmony with who you are. And you use your creative brain to achieve those. And you get those goals. Whereas 99% of the other goals, mm -hmm. you never get anyway. Turn too concentrating, too worried about it. How am I going to get it? Instead of just relaxing and let it flow and let it happen. Well, it's because we don't understand how our brain works. Our brain is like a motor car. It's a machine. Mm -hmm. It's designed to make you the best that you can be. Now, if you got into a motor car and, some, and you, you didn't know what it was, someone said what, and you said to someone, what's this? You'd say it's a machine. They'd say it's a machine. And it has a very specific job. It's to get you from where you are to where you want to go. That's, and it's, you don't doubt that it's going to do that. You know that's what it does. And it'll do it predictably. It'll do it efficiently, effectively. And you, you'll be able to enjoy the ride. You don't need to get out every five seconds and, and say, say to yourself, this is going to get to there. It is going to get there. And you don't have to think about it. It just does it. <laughs> so we don't understand that our brain is exactly the same. It's a machine. And when See, you understand we, how it works, yeah. you don't need to worry and get stressed. In fact, you realize that worry and stress block your brain because that's not the purpose of fear and stress. Fear and stress mm -hmm. only has one very specific purpose in your life biologically and that is to get rid of any immediate threat or danger to your life it's to get rid of the lion that runs out of the out of the forest at you that's the purpose of fear it's not designed to help you solve your problems it can't biologically mm -hmm. yeah i like i like how you how you, you put that together with the car when you're in a nice ride you don't stop every mile and get out and go i'm in a car <laughs> you just yeah. you just you just sit and enjoy the ride so and you also don't say Mm, wonder how this car works. I know. I'll get out from behind and I'll push. Maybe that's how it works. And I'll put in all of this effort and motivation and I'll tell myself that I'm this. I'm going to get there. What happens? You get tired. You get worn out. And yeah. then you say to yourself, the problem is I'm not trying hard enough. I need to be even more determined. Put in more effort. I need to visualize and do more affirmations. Whereas if someone just explained to you, hey, look, you're just using the machine the wrong way. It's not meant to be difficult. It's, mm -hmm. you're, meant, you're meant to be here in life to have a great adventure, not a struggle. Right, the rest right. of nature doesn't struggle. Humans are the only ones who struggle. The rest of nature just is. It enjoys itself. It, it is itself. It experiences itself. That's what biological life is, and that's the way we're supposed to be. And everywhere from the Bible to other philosophies and spiritual traditions, they've all taught us the same thing. But we just haven't interpreted it biologically correctly. And we keep coming up with all these ideas on how we have to struggle and how we have to learn more and how we, we've we got an infinite, infinitely intelligent machine there designed yeah. to do it for you. And you just need to enjoy the ride. All right. That's now, with that, with that said, my friend, let's have some fun one more time. We're going to go right time and time for... Now time for pick three. It's now time for pick three, my friend, where you're going to pick the last three questions of this interview you get to ask yourself. So give me three numbers between one and 13. Sorry, three numbers what? Between one and 13. Okay, three, six, and nine. Three, six, nine. All the right. The numbers of the universe. There you go. Actually. Number three. What advice would you give someone pursuing a similar career to yours? Just let go and see where it takes you. And avoid fear at all costs. Anything that stresses you is is bad. Let it go. Let it go. All right. Number Don't be six. Afraid. Just go for it. Yeah. Number six. Who are the three people that have been influential in your life? Uh, someone called Ken Roberts, who's a retired uh, author. Um, very, very interesting guy. Uh, two other people. Uh, Krishnamurti, who's a spiritual teacher from um, the East, and the third person who's been influential in my life, my my partner, my girlfriend. There you go. Good answer on that one. <laughs> I'm glad I got her in there. I'd be in trouble otherwise. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. And last but definitely not least, my friend, number nine, uh, where can we find you? Where can we listen to you? Where can we get your social media, website? Let everybody know. 
everything's just on my website, which is just my name, liamnaden.com. There you go. There you go. All right, my friend, it's been an honor and a pleasure to learn from you. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Charles. It's been really uh, an honor to be here. Thank you. There, there you go. All right, everybody. So here it is. What are you thinking about? And are you thinking? And here's the question. <laughs> are you overthinking? Because what I just learned today, sometimes when he was talking, I realized I do that. You know, I want to be so successful. I want to, you know, be the greatest person ever. But am I just making it happen naturally or am I overdoing it? Like he said, do you over push your car? Do you over gas your car? When your gas is full, it's full. Just let it do its job. And you know something? It's time. I just let my brain do its job. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. It's come to an end, but the fun doesn't have to stop here. If you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, head over right now to Twitter and Facebook and like, share, and get involved. Join us next time. Please be advised that this podcast is meant for educational and informational purposes only and is in no way a replacement for legal or medical advice. The opinions contained within are solely those of the interviewers and interviewees and should be received as so. Those seeking help or advice